What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and Twitch has gone full social credit score, full CCP. But every time I see Twitch streamers outraged by something, I'm just left thinking of that first time meme because us YouTubers have had this quality score on our channels for years now. We don't know everything it affects. We do know whether or not it does. I'm sorry, we do know it affects the quality of ads you see on a particular channel, which is why you don't see, for example, Coca-Cola ads on my channel or channels for rental properties or lawyers or, I don't know, real estate firms or apartments because these all pay extraordinarily well. I get random obscure mobile app number 7045 and I am thankful for it. But Twitch has now added a brand safety score for their streamers. And uh, I first saw this when Mudahar tweeted it, of course, um, or retweeted it saying, dude, this is so terrible for, you know, mature channels. Twitch literally made their version of the Chinese social credit system. We'll take a look at the actual code here, but first the coverage from the splurge. Cybersecurity researcher, Daylam Tayari, sorry, Daylam, my apologies found evidence of change somewhere in Twitch's internal API. Cybersecurity researcher has found evidence in Twitch's internal API that the site plans to implement something called a brand safety score for its streamers. That score would depend on the number of criteria, the streamer's age, a rating given by Twitch staff. Well, I wonder what a Linity score is gonna be. Um, their ban history, the relationship the streamer has with Twitch, their auto mod settings, their partnership status, the ESRB rating of the game being played, and whether the stream is set to mature. You can see if his research is indeed accurate. And here I should note that I have reached out to Twitch and will update any story I hear back. This would represent a shift in the way that advertisers interact with streamers on the platform. Presently, one of the many ways that marketers will work with streamers on Twitch is the bounty board. Select partners and affiliates in the US, UK, Germany, and France can choose from a list of paid sponsor opportunities to either play games or watch branded videos with their communities for automatic payouts. Wow, that's kind of nice. I didn't know that existed. That'd be kind of nice, like, if I could just find opportunities automatically for my YouTube channel as opposed to having to sift through thousands of emails to find one or two decent ones. Uh, it's a pretty slick system, one that streamlines and automates the occasionally arduous process of working with a brand and getting paid for it. I'm sure Twitch takes their cut. It's not hard to imagine that if Twitch does in fact implement a brand safety score, they're going to. Um, for streamers that it would be used to expand the bounty program, it seems like a useful thing for brands to be able to compare streamers on that specific axis at least. Then again, for streamers, it does mean the site is tracking you on yet another metric that may or name may not be available for you to see. And this is the problem that I have with it. When there's no transparency in your score, I think YouTube called it the P score. Let me see if there's any extra articles on that. Um, this was a long time ago. Um, yeah, 2019, basically a thousand years ago in internet years. Creators discovered YouTube's publicly available code display channels, P scores, video ratings, and more. YouTube has removed part of its website's publicly available source code after a group of creators discovered that code revealed for vital eternal information, including an individual channel's P score. YouTube's own ratings of videos and detail about the platform's potentially throttling videos. And this is where things get nefarious. By the way, if you haven't yet, I cover five to six to seven news articles a day here on my YouTube channel. I work hard for you and I hope that you appreciate it. If you haven't yet, there's a red subscribe button down below the video. And if you haven't clicked it yet, I hope that you will. And we're stuck at 92.3% of the backing goal on this channel, Subscribestar, which is a free speech supporting um, Patreon-like service. If you're in the position to, please consider um, backing today uh, to help provide some insulation against cancel culture, which I often deal with every three months or so. 
Let's break down what the P-score is before we dive in. The P-score, once called a preference score, is an internal and proprietary measurement YouTube uses to surface some of YouTube's most popular channels on the platform. The P-score algorithm judges five key areas. Popularity, or how much watch time is. Passion, or how much their user content is engaged with. That's why I talk about, like, I know it's annoying, but if I don't remind or ask people to leave a like and leave a comment, the numbers go sp significantly down. And when you guys all, when you all uh, participate in leaving likes and comments, suddenly my videos start getting recommended again. Uh, and it's so important because less than 1% of this traffic is actually, of this channel's traffic is from discovery. It's all of your hard work sharing the videos. Um, it also looks at protection uh, or content advertisers friendliness platform or how often the content is watched on devices like TV, mobile phone, and quality of production. The channel having a good P-score is a significant factor on whether or not it gets into Google's preferred a program that sells premium advertisement against what YouTube considers its top 5% most brand friendly channels. If a channel garners a high enough P-score, it's automatically enrolled in Google's preferred and will likely beginning gener begin generating more AdSense revenue thanks to running premier ads if a channel has a p score lower than youtube's top five percent it's not getting in well also what they discovered is this which was the most scary part about it creators who are doing great with popularity platform passion might never have the opportunity to fix their protection scores because they'd never know it was an issue the investigators wrote in their findings report that they added YouTube does not alert creators or give them an opportunity to access this data without finding some sort of weird exploit to get at it. The weird exploit those creators use involved a common browser tool. Anyone could see the code they looked at by going to YouTube video, browser right-clicking, selecting option to view the source. That's all gone now, by the way. This creators probed the code and found that every video on YouTube showed uploader's P-score in a content section called content label rating along with an exact P-score number. Now, the investigating creators apparently noticed the pieces of code were present on nearly every video rated teen or above. They suspect YouTube's throttling is dividing um, the brand safety throttling, where it restricts ads from videos after deeming them not brand safe, and feature video throttling, which could refer to YouTube keeping the video from being recommended by its algorithms. One thing they did note about brand safety throttling is that many of the videos with that tag were still monetized. Now the brand safety, uh, brand safety label or whatever that we used to be able to see, you know, right. You know, most of my videos had that, but you know, my channel, uh, the overwhelming majority of videos are monetized. I'll go through a good month like right now and then April will start and all of a sudden it'll be like 30, 40% of them don't get monetized. It's difficult to know. I understand why this information is curated, kept updated. Um, it's very valuable. But what I don't understand is why you hide it from creators. Because wouldn't it only serve, by the way, uh, better uh, if creators could know, hey, whatever it is I'm doing in my videos is leading towards this particular label. This is not good. It's costing me money and my videos aren't getting recommended. I'm going to make a change. Some content creators might not care. Um, but, you know, if you have to, like, curse a little less or whatever the case may be, there's nothing wrong with making that change. You can see here the current state of the streamer's relationship with Twitch streamer in good standing. If the streamer has been suspended, general reason why. Streamer suspension reason. Um, and you look here all sorts of other stuff. Uh, if the streamer is a partner, if the streamer is 18 years or older, if the streamer is 21 years or older, if the streamer is auto mod enabled, how sensitive auto mod is. Now this is like looking at, you know, how sensitive your chat is, um, you know, how, how draconian you police your viewers. A full list of factors of Twitch star tracking are age, manual rating given by Twitch staff, who knows what, how that is, ban history, relationship with the streamer has with Twitch and auto mod partnership status, ESRB rating. Um, and ultimately, 
here you see people don't trust Twitch on this and they shouldn't. Hassan Bakari worked there for years and leveraged creators standing with Twitch in favor for spicy advances. This was well known. And 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 all of these things here. What they're basically doing is limiting the prospects of mature oriented channels to foster a more uniform and predictable uh, streamer base that appeals to younger viewers and advertisers. I mean, first time, this is what they've been doing to us on YouTube for years. Not that I like it, not that I'm happy. Um, you know, I have people that stream for a living um, and this is only going to hurt them. You see here, ah, yeah, we missed the good old P score from YouTube. That's a pleasure to see us coming to Twitch too. Nice. It's exactly right. Well, make sure you uh, get your nursery rhymes queued up. And, uh, you know, again, I don't, put, in particular, there's, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with them maintaining this data. There will be advertisers that are fine on spicy content. And in fact, there are advertisers that seek it out. But where I get concerned is, if and when this leads to any type of throttling, you know, where you are in the search results, this would work the same way for Twitch and how that affects things. And if you hide that data, how do you expect anyone to get any better? I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.